Hello and welcome to another edition of Judge Dread Miniatures Game here on Small World Games. Um, as you can see I've got a few boxes to uh, open up here so I thought we'd have a little unboxing and a general natter about uh, the two city deck boxes currently available from Warlord Games. I'm going to start off uh, with the main box here. This is the city deck. So we've got various uh, guys and girls there of various ranks. So each city block in Mega City 1 has the right, if not duty, to maintain its own local defence unit to assist the Justice Department against threats, both foreign and domestic. Unfortunately, time and again, it's become apparent that when average citizens with their usual share of grudges, grievances and paranoias have access to military-grade equipment, the most mundane law enforcement situations can escalate disastrously out of hand. A uh, city def unit not only has access to personal armour and military grade small arms, but each unit will also have a nominally secure arsenal of explosives and heavy weapons. This gives the Justice Department two painful headaches. Firstly, criminal elements needing access to weapons and training need only join the local city def, and secondly, the pressures of mega city life have created a new form of mass psychosis, block mania, which uh, materialised as open warfare between neighbouring blocks. So, it contains six Warlord Resin City Dev miniatures, plastic bases, two unit cards, one armoury card peepers, one big meg card, hit them with everything. Oh yeah, let's get this open. Okay, so there's a, a five bases, oh, six bases. And we have a few unit cards, or general cards, should I say. Um, this has been uh, lovingly packed by uh, Redisa. Okay, thanks, Redisa. I say lovingly packed, so I don't know if it's been lovingly packed. I'd lovingly pack it. And I'll be putting it in there, wondering what adventures they were going off to have, but that's just me. Here, okay, so there's a few of these uh, assembled and ready to go. There's a couple of them, just have to put those in a bit more detail. Oh, helmet down on that one, visor down on that one. Sorry, obviously, means business. Oh, it's like a Robocop thing the illusion of free will. Okay, there you go. Is that a she? Yep, she looks like a leader, she looks like she'll be in charge. Actually, so do you. It's some mad hair he's got going there. Look at that, and a beard. Good look. Oops. Oh, this is the dual, uh, I presume they're spit pistols guy. Yeah, he's cool. And. Not sure what this one's story is. Just having a little sneak around there, or a little. Oh. And a bit of spur of the various weapons. Especially some various. Well, I don't know what these specifically are, what they're meant to be, but. Uh, Oh, they're good. Just some combat rifles, possibly. A spit pistol. Box set pictures at the minute. I'm not, uh, not special about those. Right then. What have we got here? Okay, so the City Def Squad Leader. The well, I was supposed to be the character, sort of, of the group. Um, I know it says no track. You know what? Because the, the artwork that Waller put out have these City Def markings on them. And I really quietly hoped that these might have some transfers in them, but uh, some decals in them, but uh, alas not. Um, I suppose I could have found that out before, and it was you know, a nice surprise, or not a nice surprise, as it turns out. Um, I, I'm really not going to be attempting that freehand. Well, you will. Who knows? Right, and City Def Squad Leader. There you go. Special rules all written on the card this time, which is useful. So, uh, access to the armory, the leader from the front, and uh, there you go, there's a bit of equipment he has access to. 
So these are everyone else. Troop Auxiliary. No sniper on this one. Mind you, the sniper's near the box. Maybe the car that's not coming in. Okay. And uh, hit them with everything. And peepers. So they're peepers as in goggles, not peepers as in, you know, the peepers recruited by the judge like uh, Homer Blind. So the model ignores the effect of smoke and stealth suits. Useful aim fire or snapshot remains in play. And for the so the big med card, I have um, hit him with everything. Your faction leader and any friendly model within six of them may each take an immediate snapshot. All shots must be resolved at uh, one nominated enemy model within a uh, line of sight of the lead. Now it sounds good, doesn't it? Ah, definitely, a, definitely one for a military group. Nice. All right then. We'll move them out of the way for a minute, and we'll move on to the uh, City of Ephraim reinforcements. Okay, so we've got uh, models there, we've got a uh, sniper, a uh, missile launcher, and uh, I'd say that looks like it could be a leader. Yeah, on the radio there, or on the scanner or something, that's quite cool. Um, so that's the same... Uh, Thing we've already uh, read through, so I won't go through that again. I won't subject you to that again. Um, three Warlord Resin Sit Death Miniatures, plastic bases, three unit cards, big med cards, troggies, and troggies. Okay, I'd have thought there'd be a unit at some point, possibly. And uh, okay, plan B. Oh, that's two big med cards rather than army cards this time. Interesting. Okay. So we've got the. Again, let's have a look. Oh, a little bit cards in there. Let's have a look at the models first. Nope, and base isn't there. I'm not lie. I'm sure we've all seen bases before. Okay, so there is a sniper. That's a one piece model. That's quite cool, isn't it? And there's cape as well. Fantastic. These are all in the uh, Warlord resin. Now, every time I get a set of these, it, it feels sort of hard. This almost feels like a hard plastic. On the, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking these. They get better every time I get a set of them. I think I've said that in a previous video. And here we have the leader character missing an arm. That's on the, oh, that's on the little sprue there. With the rocket launcher. That's a cool. One. Yeah, she's definitely in charge. Even though she's not meant to be, she will be in my uh, in my little squad. Uh, this is the uh, missile launcher. I think I've got two hands on that, so I'll take that away. Awesome. Right, and so, as for cards, we have the uh, CDF card, same as the other set. CDF squad leader card, ah. And City Def Sniper. That's a cool little picture. And a special sniper. Let you have a little read of that. Well, there you have got it in the book. And there you go, yep. Two big med cards. Right, so yep, troggies. So, a nominate an incapacitated or subdued model. Uh, well, presumably your enemy, um, but uh, it's not specific. Um, it is dragged away into the Undercity by Troggies, never to be heard from again. That's one of the early progs. In fact, I think it's in the um, Case Files Part 1 uh, from the first year. Um, yeah, the Troggies are from Underground. Obviously, there have been later stories as well, but uh, that was the main one I remember them from. But, uh, using people as uh, they've captured from, using the normals that they've captured from above to uh, dig underground where they're planting explosives. To level Mega City One, right? Okay, Plan B: Draw three action chits. Return any opponent chits to the bag and use any of your chits to activate models as normal. Okay, so multiple activations in one go. Provided you do draw your own. Ah, cool. Ryan, so we'll get these assembled and uh, we'll come back and have a look at them.
those are all uh, done and assembled. I've um, yeah, I'm sort of used to working with this uh, particular material. It's always a bit difficult to uh, move some of the mold lines and things like that. But I dare say I'll get there sooner or later. The quality, as I've said already, always improves. So um, you know, we'll uh, they'll be there one day. Um, right. So on to the um, well, base coating next stage. And uh, for that, I'm just going to have a little chat about this that I've just picked up. TT Combat's um, Black Spectre um, Spray Primer. Um, it's uh, I think it's only been about for the last couple of months. They've only branched into it. It's, um, it's the first one. It's new for me, but I've always been very happy with uh, the quality of TT Combat's products. So I thought I'd give it a go. Now, as you know, with all these things, you can get a little bit of a diff different experience from one uh, spray uh, paint to another. I'm going to have a quick little go with this first on a uh, you know just a rough model that I'm. Uh, not so bother that one with spares, just to check I know what I'm doing with it. And then uh, if I'm happy, or dare say when I'm happy, I'll uh, crack on and um, apply it to uh, to these guys. Following the manufacturer's guidelines and doing it in a well ventilated area. Right then, uh, with those all sprayed up, I have to say it's improved the look of the, uh, the resin. Um, the areas where I've cleaned up don't look as obvious now, so I've done a better job of those than I thought I did. The spray itself, I have to say, yeah, very impressive. It's got a bit of a shine to it, but... Um, you know that, that does happen, and I'll probably compare it to maybe the um, the Army Painters range of uh, of undercoat. I know it's only the one can I've used, but that's probably the closest thing I could um, compare it to for those of you with experience with that. Which is no bad thing because I do like the uh, Army Painter range. Um, the big thing about TT Combat's range is, well, a lot of TT Combat they are very um, very well priced um, for the same size can. Um, cost you uh, well certainly in the UK cost you a few pounds extra for another brand. Right then, so here they are. Um, makes it one's very own weekend warriors. I wonder if they get snide little comments in the street from citizens. You know, you can't do anything. You're not a real judge. <laughs> right. So yeah, um, a couple of favourites. I've got to say, uh, well, a few favourites. I've got to say, um, definitely this guy with the missile launcher because, well, it's a freaking missile launcher. Um, secondly, this one here that uh, that I've deemed as the leader because of the radio she's holding there. Well, I say radio. It could be a pack of cigarettes actually. I know it would be. Um, a bit wrong to be having a uh, unconcealed tobacco uh, container on the streets of Mega City One. However, as the box did say, these aren't always the uh, the best of characters. And I definitely also like this sort of casual-looking fellow here. The sleeves rolled up, too cool for school. Right, and so uh, those are all uh, now going to be ready for a uh, a lick of paint. I'll probably do a, a video covering that, and um, also another video coming for Judge Dread will be. Uh, we'll have a look at the further expanding the justice department and um, okay uh, i also like i'm pretty sure this will have a little talk about what's um, going to be coming our way this takes back to may last year so it's not the most newest of information however we have been asked by warlord for some opinions on what we'd like to see in a mega city citizen set um, i've this was on the official warlord 2000 ad games page on facebook um, I think I opted for uh, the fleeing and or bystanders myself. I think the I think the uh, baying mob would uh, clash too much with um, the block gangs. Um, also, I've had a it's been a while, well, a little while since we've seen a new set from this game, um, and I did send an email to all of recently just, to, <laughs> just out of curiosity, and I was told uh, in the very near future to look at the uh, Facebook page for emails, and uh, we should have something coming. So yeah, exciting times. Right, so uh, that's it from me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe and uh, pop that little bell button um, to make sure you're notified uh, of uh, future content for this or some of the other games we cover. And uh, until next time, stay out of trouble. Thanks for watching and good night.